My name is Basil Siokos. I want to welcome you all here to the festival. This is our fourth year. Uh, in four years, we've grown to be the largest documentary festival in the U.S., so we're pretty excited to be able to share so many films with audiences like yourself, who I have to point out are probably, is probably the best-dressed audience we've had the entire festival. So. We are very, very happy to have with us the director of the film to say a few words right before. Uh, so please join me in welcoming the director, Vicky Vasilopoulos. This film is really about three unsung heroes, Nino, Joe, and Kikino. They're, um, they're world-class artisans, they're Italian master tailors, and I feel like they really deserve to be celebrated, and that's the reason why I made this film. Some people think that tailoring is about sewing, and it is, but that's a very small part of it. Um, what tailors do is they put their entire life experience into everything that they create. So they work with their, with their mind, with their heart, and with their hands. As with every artist, they identify with their creations. And, um, you know, to watch them firsthand and expressing their passion um, was really a very moving experience for me. And I think that um, ultimately what this film is about is what a gift it is when you find your true calling in life. The great documentarian Albert Maisels um, said that making a documentary is uh, a very circuitous journey. And uh, making Men of the Cloth definitely was. I never imagined that it would take 11 years. <laughs> but you have to follow the story where it takes you. And um, I'm so glad that I stuck with it and that I'm here today uh, to share it with you. I started with Kikino in Italy, actually. Um, that was where I was first introduced to the craft, appropriately enough, uh, on a reporting trip there. And he just had this incredible spark and passion. And I realized that this is a really special individual. And just the factory was such an amazing place. You know, everyone had their role. And then, you know, the experience in, with the school, seeing those young kids, you know, with the punk haircuts, mm -hmm. sewing. I just thought, oh my God, what is this place? It was just really, really amazing. And I, when I came back to, um, to New York, I thought, there's got to be other guys doing this, right? right? So I started to do some research, and um, you know, Nino's name kept coming up as being, you know, the best of the best. Right. So that was the obvious reason why I went to him, and I started with him almost immediately. And then I heard about Joe Centofanti um, outside of Philadelphia, and he was almost like a generation older right. than right. Nino. So he's like, the, you know, he was the elder statesman. Um, and then slowly the pieces started to come together as I filmed their process in their workroom. I realized that, you know, Joe's role was really like, um, of kind of like what the, what the past was. And, you know, also he had the, you know, the apprentice and young Joe, mm -hmm. strangely enough, there was an older Joe and a yes. younger Joe. Um, but I had actually thought I was done with the film by the time I find out about younger Joe. Okay. So that's why it took longer, and it became an entirely different film. Right. With a, with a different traje uh, trajectory. Um, but really, it was like the best thing that could have happened in the end. So we could have featured any number of tales, but I chose to go narrow and deep rather than to give, you know, uh, a spectrum. I think the individual stories kind of show you through their career trajectories uh, you know, through the lives of Nino, Joe, and Kikino, both the, the past, the present, and the future of the craft. It was really about them, their personalities, yes. how compelling they are, how passionate they are, how articulate they were about being able to talk about their craft. Not every uh, artisan can. Some of them just want to be left alone in right. the corner to do their work and not be bothered. In fact, most of them are that right, way. Right, right. Um, so they were very unique in that respect. Yeah, their, their personality shine, I mean, in terms of just the way that they're dealing with the customers that come in or you and kind of giving you a tour of what they do is very, it's, yeah, it's, it they comes have, through for they certain. They have a pride, but you know, they're also very humble mm -hmm. and uh, they're self-deprecating, you know, they're funny, they're wise, they're all those things. And you just, you know, you can watch them endlessly. Mm -hmm. I think it does have a, the ability to broaden beyond a very a niche audience totally and had i finished the film you know five years ago as i had originally intended 
Thanks, Joe. Um, it would have been a different story because mm. as we know, there's been this resurgent interest in artisanship Absolutely. Um, uh, amongst young people. And you know, Brooklyn, uh, where Joe works right now is like artisan USA, you know, artisan capital. Um, there's a lot of interest uh, from young people. I thought, originally I thought the, audi the, uh, the audience for this film would be much older mm. people yes. and, and it is, but the flip side is there's many, many young people who are very excited about it, uh, design students. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, people who are sort of um, perhaps, you know, opting out of um, marketing driven, mm -hmm. uh, sort of global, you know, uh, clothing that's just, you know, it's right, advertised yeah. everywhere. They want something more personal, more mm -hmm. uni more uh, uniquely, you know, um, something more idiosyncratic. Mm -hmm. And um, that's pretty much in the air right now. I mean, it's like the slow food of clothing. Absolutely, uh, that's that's the next thing. There's a warmth to it, and a sort of you can see who's doing it for you and who's working with you to make sure that you yeah, are getting it, what you want, not just something off the rack that everybody else has. Sure, it means something when you can see someone prepare your meal mm -hmm. or your clothing, or someone who you know you commission a work of art and you watch them create it in front of your very eyes. It's it's a it's an incredible experience, you Absolutely. know, and it has. You know, as as um, uh, Gabriele at the Brioni factory said, you know, they say that even the buttons, the buttonholes have like the soul mm. of every person who contributed to that jacket. Right. Right. Absolutely. It's well, true. I, I, I was getting the signal. We do have to wrap up. I want to thank you so much for letting us world premiere this film here. I want to thank you all thank for you. being here as well. Thank you so much for being at New the Dr. Noisy.